they open their mouth and create a giant suction, actually, by opening their mouth that sucks in their prey. A very good morning, chat. Eight to twelve, signing in. Good morning, eight to twelve. Good morning, eight to twelve. How's it going? Let's get it. Five by five. <laughs> eight by twelve. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a length of a lumber. <laughs> One lumber. One lumber. Okay. Where are we going? What are we doing? Science. We are headed up slope here. Okay, science is briefing on the watch. Change. Science is briefing, great. Let's move up slope. <laughs> Look, there's another one, or it's the same one. Just following them around. Zoom in, Dave. The same one. Oh, Shana Cobbs. Oh, it's the same one. Is this the same one? Yeah. Okay. How we're do you not, know? We're not going in circles. Because <laughs> <laughs> it swam off, and then this just happens to look just like it. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't know. Can you count the spots? Science, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you're looking at high pack, we've got some decisions to make. The last watch was kind of headed um, up slope. 
they okay. made a little zigzag to the east, hoping to find something interesting. They did not find anything interesting, so they came back. Um, but they were headed towards waypoint five and bypassing waypoint four. Curious if you'd like to continue on that path. Um, yes. Great. So are we continuing to the west or are we heading back upslope? Upslope. Okay. Up yep. yeah. um, I think we'll do one more step west. Yeah, just to give us a better angle to head up the slope. Okay. They said that they were ahead of schedule, but that's not usually a issue for us. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. True. I think now? it should work out. Morning, Flavio. Uh, let's do five zero meters, two nine zero. Two nine zero. Okay, so we'll do this one, 290 step, and then we'll start heading north. Is that another one? Chonacop City. There we Whoa. go. Nope. Maybe? Nope. Holothorian? Holothorian. 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 <laughs> 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 that was a nice idea. You guys aren't excited about the Holothorian? You're right. Oh, yes. Wow. wow. Look at that. It. It's Look not it. just so a Holothorian. Standard issue. Okay. Skew <laughs> enthusiasm. <laughs> Anything on this rock of interest? Um. Zoom in, Dave. No. Oh, go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. Why not? Oh, what's that little coral next to the? Right. Ooh. So what? Oh. Little one next to the yeah. Uh, what is that? Oh, Carcigorda. or is that a metallic bird? It almost looks like a. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I didn't say it. So the Carcig, <laughs> the Carcigorda is Carcigorda geniculata, but that smaller one. I don't know. Steve is suggesting a bryosaur. Huh. A oh. Shot? Okay. That's interesting. I've never seen that. Thanks, Diane, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. So we got it, or need more investigation? We are good. Thank you. <coughs> and for all of our folks tuning in, thanks so much for being here as we explore the deep southern flank and summit of GEO 10 together. Our ex expected dive duration is about 24 hours with a max depth of 2440 meters. Chat, if you have any questions, we have our amazing team ready to answer them for you. So send in your questions and I, your SCF for the AT-12 watch, will relay your questions to the team. Team, when we're ready, why don't we start on some uh, introductions and follow-up question. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> you drum roll. <laughs> well, well, you know, in honor of our like last watch, like it's a two-part question. Oh, um, two part. Oh, no. oh wow. Straightforward, straightforward. You know, <laughs> straightforward. Okay, your introductions and then the questions. One. Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, when we get to shore? And two, uh, what will you miss most about our cruise, this expedition? Why don't we go with the awesome friend Ro? Let's, let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> Any, meeny, bunny, bo. <laughs> friend Ro. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Everybody in the front row went, not it. 
Uh, Dave Robertson, lead video engineer, and uh, sitting in the video seat this morning, zooming in on things. Um, uh, looking forward to uh, one. Let's see. Looking forward to well, my wife. Uh, she's been uh, up in Alaska, visiting up there, and she's looking forward to getting to our place in Oregon. I'm looking forward to going wherever she is, and. Uh, that's always been the definition of home for our semi-nomadic lifestyle. So home is wherever my wife is. Aww. That's really sweet. That's I beautiful. go there, <laughs> wherever she goes. Um, what will I miss most? Uh, bacon for breakfast every morning. <laughs> <laughs> when I get home, Bacon's I don't get, good ba I don't get so bacon breakfast every morning. <laughs> just don't. So that's it. Uh, Mike Burns in the Atlanta uh, pilot chair. Um, I think the thing that I'm most looking forward to would probably, yeah, a second day, just uh, getting back to to my fiance and our dog uh, and spending time with them. Uh, I think the uh, thing that I'll probably miss the most is the, the chaos crew. So, uh, <laughs> highly, highly entertaining. Glassboro. So, oh, God. <laughs> yes. Glassboro. <laughs> didn't say I was looking forward to Glassboro. I said I was looking forward to wherever my fiance is. Big difference. In Glassboro. <laughs> In Glassboro. <laughs> I'm the Hertz pilot. I'm OET's facility manager and ROV engineer. Uh, looking forward to my first, my, or my only weekend in the last and upcoming <laughs> three months period. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Which I almost wasn't going to get. I heard you might yeah. take a road trip up to Canada. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> no. And you'll miss. Oh, <clears throat> what will I miss? <laughs> Us. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't, I don't think that was a real answer. <laughs> I thought I couldn't use the same answer. No, <laughs> you can. We're all gonna have the same answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going along with that. I don't know. It seems <laughs> coercive now. <laughs> He's going to miss all the Jelly Bellies in the RV shop. We've been missing the Jelly Bellies for like two weeks now. I know. I'm sorry. There what? were Jelly Bellies. What the the Jelly Bellies? I know, well, right? You didn't know doesn't hurt I didn't. You. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling pretty Secret hurt. Secret stashes all over the ship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Samantha Wishnack. Uh, navigator, also the. Oh, are we introducing ourselves? Yes. I guess. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, also, the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which operates Nautilus. Um, I will. Oh, so what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to seeing some mm -hmm. really good friends uh, in Europe after this, and in New York. Oh, um, nice. And then. I will be missing this watch. That was of questionable authenticity. Yeah. Actually, I'm also going to be missing the art gallery. Right. Because I think that's been a fantastic uh, addition to our standard, our standard issue, <laughs> standard offering. <laughs> oh, look at these little anthemastus with two oh, tiny cute. arms. Yeah, regrowing. Throwing it to the back row. Back row. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry, oh, Paula. Go you. <laughs> go you and then I will. Okay. I'm Jules. I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. I am a scientist on the 8 to 12 watch. Um, I'm looking forward to touching land, um, seeing my friends and family. Of course, I feel like I have to. Okay, that's rude, but I feel like I have to say that <laughs> because everyone else has. <laughs> Um, Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to go swimming. Um, <laughs> I will miss 
a 12 watch, obviously. Um, seeing the ocean every day. And mm, bacon. <laughs> bacon! <laughs> You have a special guest today. Oh, no, I'm just a backseat. <laughs> Welcome, Deb. Deb. Deb, introduce Come yourself. On, Deb. Welcome yeah. to the Chaos Crew. <laughs> Chaos Crew. I am uh, just sitting here in the back row watching. I don't get in the van very often, but my name is Deb Smith. I am a mapping coordinator on this expedition. Um, I also have a day job as the OECI data governance manager at the University of Rhode Island. Um, so I get to work tangentially with Ocean Exploration Trust um, as one of our affiliate institutes. And yeah, my, uh, let's see, I'm looking most forward to a last minute vacation that I didn't think I was going to have on oh. the Big Island. So I'm going to meet up with my cousin there. And I'm also looking forward to going home and going sailboat racing because wow. Oh, wow. I haven't spent enough time on the water, I guess. Um, and I think what I'll miss most is mapping. I do like mapping, so most people find it boring, but I actually quite enjoy it and done it for 20 years. And so this got this trip allowed me to kind of peek back into that world for a moment in time. So that's so nice. Wow, right? that is. Thank yeah. you. Hey, so hi everyone. My name is Paula Santiago. I am a marine biologist from Puerto Rico. I work on coral restoration, and I am this watch data logger and this expedition science intern and what I'll miss okay what I'm most looking forward to that's the first question right okay I am looking forward to seeing I feel like you was my friends and family <laughs> <laughs> not really oh my dog even though sometimes he doesn't appear to be as excited as I am to see him back <laughs> and where I work the coral reefs um, they bring me a lot of peace so I'm really looking forward to going there as I get back, and the what I miss most, I think, is our watch. Similar to a lot of you, the Chaos Crew has been something else. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> something else. Yeah, <laughs> something else. I have no words. Like it exceeded every one of my expectations. <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> oh, um, thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Annie Halleck. I'm from Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. I am this watch uh, SCF. And what I will, oh my gosh, I'm spacing out on my own question. Um, <laughs> look forward to. Yes, you thank forward you, to? thank you. Uh, first question, what am I looking forward to? Definitely, um, definitely my family. Um, I, I miss them a lot. I'm looking forward to um, hanging out with them, seeing them again, and then, oh, second question. <laughs> Thanks. What are you going to miss the most? What are you going to miss the most? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Questions. I'm sorry. Dr. Tammy, our last dive. <laughs> last question. You get us to open up. And <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. What are we going to miss the most? I want to miss a lot. Definitely uh, the fellowship with everyone, but most especially um, our uh, chaos crew, our watch. Um, I, I enjoy everybody's personalities and just the laughter and getting to learn together as well. I'm, I'm really going to miss it. Um, I am going to miss the sunrise, sunsets, um, just being in the ocean, like what Jules said. Um, it's like, you know, you never know what happens and it's a, a once in a lifetime opportunity just to be out here with everyone. So yeah, that, that's me. It's, it's been a ride. It's been a really amazing um, expedition so far. Um, well, thank you so much, team, um, for everybody tuning in. A well, shout out to everybody tuning in. We have our friends from all over the United States, Canada, UK, Germany, Netherlands, Italy, Norway, Ireland, Finland, Denmark, and Australia. Um, thanks so much for being here as we explore together. Um, if you have any questions, um, please send them in the chat, and I will relay your questions to the team. Um, so regarding our dive, um, what's our objective? Anything specific that we are looking for? Um, we're going to continue to document uh, the organisms that are characteristic of this area and sample when it seems 
fit. Right. <laughs> um, we have a, a couple of samples already of some of the things that we've been seeing a lot. And of course, anything new or out of the ordinary. Um, we have taken another polychaete. Oh. <laughs> we did a little yeah. sponge investigation last night. Yeah. We <laughs> used the That's slurp on the inside of the sponge. <laughs> cool. Uh, and it like was a, a straw, a reverse straw. <laughs> it worked, but not in the way people think it worked. <laughs> we were able to ID it, right? Yep, and it yeah, like stayed the same in the sponge. Before, right. <laughs> That's um, interesting. Yeah, I do we have eDNA yet? We have two eDNAs. Oh, like. we already have eDNA. Okay, so yep. that's all set. Um, we have a push core, I believe. And do we have we have rocks? We have rocks. Okay. That's so it. sampling if the opportunity arises. <laughs> So far, the two eDNA samples has been on regions with high biodiversity. Our checklist is looking good. Mm. Are we looking for Niskan samples in areas of low biodiversity? We have, are fun. both of them in areas of high biodiversity? Okay, then yes. We are looking for a blank. Great, I think we will find <laughs> ample <laughs> <I think> opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of spots. Uh, this looks like Amphidicella, the sponge we just passed. Noted. Thank you. Jewel, since I'm new here. Yeah. What is it that you most enjoy studying? Like, what's your focus? I know you're working at the, um, is it museum? Bridge, is it yeah. Museum? What's it, institute? Yeah. But, I like, what was your, is it, like, corals, sponges? What's your focus? So thing. I think my like background is in like, I guess you could say like invertebrate <coughs> taxonomy, okay. um, coral and, and sponge biology and ecology. Um, I'm especially interested in molecular biology. Um, so from like microbial to like stem cell. Um, so I, I work in the invertebrate department at the MCZ. Um, before coming here, I was a curatorial assistant. So nice. I was managing the specimens, uh, like the ones that we collect on the Nautilus, mm -hmm. um, adding them to the database, imaging them, etc. cetera. Um, and then when I return, I'll be starting a new position in the invertebrate department um, in a lab associated with the department. Um, so they study the mechanisms and evolution of regeneration in the three-banded panther worm. So I'll be starting as a lab manager. I'm very excited. Um, it's a great team. Um, really interesting research that nicely ties together my experiences and interests. Um, I was working in a microbial ecology lab and I think that's maybe my my true love. Oh. Um, <laughs> All the so little things. We'll see. But Can yeah. you talk about cool. three banded panther worms? Yeah. Three banded <laughs> I, panther I was gonna worms come back to that too. <laughs> are very very cool organisms. Um, so you can cut these guys into like I think the limit is like seven hundred and thirty pieces or something. And each of these pieces will become a new worm. Whoa. They're wow. nearly indestructible. Um, oh, very impressive. I'm not sure if that's cool or creepy. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, so we want to know how they're doing this. So we're looking at all sorts of structures within these worms. Um, they also have some transgenic lines going in the lab. Um, and they're looking at like, what happens to the cells after you split them? Like, how do they differentiate? Mm. Um, so the worm somehow knows which side it's been left with. So it knows whether it's been left with the, the head or the tail end. Interesting. And then it will form where it's been cut accordingly. 
the and you can end. do this in embryos. Interesting. And and they'll know what they need to compensate for, which is just mind blowing to me. Nature's cool. What worm is that? It's the three banded panther worm. Annie's googling it. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of oh. things that I like Google here and do like little right. mini deep dives. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, they don't look like pandas, oh. so I'm not quite sure where that name came from. <laughs> Pan panther. But they also don't look like I panthers. I said the same thing. I wish they looked like panthers. That'd be really neat. I said the same thing for acorn worms. I was trying to look for the acorn part. <laughs> they do have bands. They do have bands. <laughs> they do. Those are they do. Cool. Do the bands, interestingly, do the bands do anything? Like, do the bands help tell them what's their head or their tail? Or do they grow more bands as you chop them into many little pieces? Um, not to my knowledge. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure that the the bands mean anything significant. Um, Monzi, I apologize if I'm misrepresenting <laughs> your research. <laughs> this is on the spot pop quizzing. There, we don't take answers seriously. Oh, it seems <laughs> there is some color <laughs> variation. There's a paper on color variation in... Well, the scientific name is Hofsenia Miamia, um, which makes me think of Miami. Where are they <laughs> predominantly found? Um, great question. So in this particular paper, they were collected from a submerged mangrove um, forest. Near um, Miami? <laughs> no. Have to have been. I don't <laughs> believe so. Um, so they're not really a deep their... sea organism. They're more of a. They're not a deep sea shell. organism. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So they are a marine invertebrate, but they are not, as far as I know, found in the deep sea. Let's add uh, three zero meters to the step um, zero two five. What's this orange thing coming up? Do we think there's something at the top of this? Rock? That looks like a shrimp. shrimp. Oh. They are found oh. all the way all down. All the way down. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Okay, so they're mainly found in the Caribbean, Bahamas, Bermuda, Japan, and the Red Sea. Wait, we have them back home, those worms? In Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. Apparently. I don't so like that idea. I mean, if you see one. <laughs> <laughs> and now Paula doesn't want to go home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they are voracious predators. Oy, on what? what? Watch out. Watch out. Voracious <laughs> predators of Jules. what? Um, that's a good point. <laughs> Mud? <laughs> I will be feeding them essentially smaller worms. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Worms that eat other worms. Yes. Interesting. Um, I don't like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I love microscopy. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to do some of my own research in the lab, um, come up with a research question to investigate. So cool. that will be very, very cool. I had a little sneak peek of the Smithsonian this some, this last, I don't know, a few months ago at a meeting down there. Yeah. And uh, it was cool. We got the tour of the MS MSC building where they had their invertebrate collection mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Come up to the MCZ anytime. Yeah. That to extends to visit. everyone. Ooh. Yeah. I think Coralie um, might bring Loopy up to visit. Oh, hopefully. maybe I'll jump in the car on that trip. It'll be a you fun should. road trip. <laughs> How long is the drive from, from Rhode Island to Boston? Mm, depends on traffic, like most things to big cities, but, and I guess Boston is, an, it's a big city, but not that big. Um, about an hour and a half to two hours. If you oh, get okay. stuck in like rush hour traffic, it can take a long time. But yeah. if you time it right, it's about an hour and a half. Deb, do you know Wardsbury Farm? Uh, I've heard of it. Okay. I haven't been there. <laughs> I used to work there and we would go down to uh, Rhode Island to the farmer's markets all the time. Ah, nice. Yeah. While being a tiny state, I still don't see a lot of it. We, because we're a tiny state, we're mm. we have like 
tiny driving, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we don't go very far. Tiny <laughs> driving. <laughs> Small range. Yeah. Is that better, Dave? Deb, yesterday we were all talking about how we got to the Nautilus and sort of our paths here. Mm. Do you also want to answer that question? <coughs> I can. Um, how far back? <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> as far as you want. As no pressure, want. but it's just been really cool hearing about everyone's backgrounds. It's true. Yeah, so um, I guess I could, well, I guess tangentially, um, it's kind of fun and feels a little full circle for me, but when I was in high school, um, middle school and high school, the Jason project was going on out of URI. And so as a kid who grew up in South County near the University of Rhode Island, I um, was tangentially involved in that. We got to go and see um, and meet Dr. Ballard. So that as a, as, a, as a young student who at the time probably was interested in oceanography and interested in doing something in the ocean, um, sort of that first peek into that. And I had a high school teacher who was enthusiastic about plate tectonics is all I can say. <laughs> she <laughs> loved it. She was a uh, earth science teacher um, and and really got uh, involved. And in, um, so that was kind of my uh, first introduction to hydrothermal vents and all that kind of underwater deep sea. But fast forward a ways, I went to Maine Maritime Academy and I have a bachelor's in marine science. And then spent the next, um, after graduating, spent the next 15 years working for a hydrographic survey company. So I did shallow water mapping for nautical chart updating. Um, and then um, got involved with the Schmidt Ocean Institute and in the research vessel Falcor and worked there as a marine technician for the last six years. And in the last year, I took a position at the University of Rhode Island and the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute as their data governance manager. And Ocean Exploration Trust and the EV Nautilus is one of our affiliate institutes. And so I've gotten involved with the team here um, through mostly the proposal and annual reporting and data governance side of things. And um, the team at OET reached out to me when they had um, a last minute vacancy for mapping coordinator on this expedition and asked me if I could come. And after um, a no and then a yes, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so um, the no is just because this is our very busy time in the office doing proposals um, right. for the next years of funding. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here. It's been kind of fun cool. to come back out to sea for a month and to get to experience this great ship and organization. and. Um, it's always great experience to go on various different vessels and see how different people operate and, and how everybody works together. And so that's my tangential path to Nautilus, this expedition. <laughs> it seems like you've had a little bit more of a straightforward path than the rest of us. Yeah. So you sort of were interested in deep sea or in exploration pretty early on yeah I think um, the for I think the initial work in um, in ocean floor mapping was not something I was necessarily expecting I did a couple of internships mm -hmm. I was actually one of the first interns with um, mate marine advanced technology education center on the um, Edwin link and Seward Johnson out of Harbor Branch and so those were both um, internships where I really thought I was probably gonna work for the next number of years as a marine tech mm -hmm. um, and that type of of position and and instead um, ended up taking a position with this hydrographic company <clears throat> and stayed a lot longer than I realized but um, so but it then kind of getting involved in more of the deep ocean stuff and getting back out to sea doing ocean exploration has been really great and meeting a lot of people and it's a very small community even mm -hmm. though we work in probably the largest <laughs> arena on the, the planet. Largest geographic range. <laughs> um, largest geographic range, however, you can always um, go places and run into people. So I yeah. have um, one of the other projects that OECI is involved with is the MDBC and the Mesophotic Deep End the Communities and the um, Post um, Deepwater Horizon Restoration Project in the Gulf of Mexico. And Ooh. so oh. I attended a meeting and ran into a couple of scientists that I um, sailed with on Falcor. Um, and we've continued to kind of pop in and out of um, that. So yeah, it's it's really great. You get to meet a lot of great different scientists and people doing different work all over the, around the world. Um, 
you know, all kind of for the same thing, this sort of question mark, right? We're just mm -hmm. out here answering a giant question mark, which I don't know if we'll ever get rid of the question mark, which is kind of fun too. Yeah. yeah. Huh. That's really great. I feel like, yeah, the the marine science community in general, but especially the the deep sea community, I feel like it's just a really, really great bunch of people. Um, I think that, I don't know, everyone has really just encouraged learning. Yeah. Right. And that's been huge. Well, we're constantly learning. I think that's the important thing. If you get to the point where you think that you know everything or that you don't, <laughs> you're not going to learn something new, you're going to miss some really cool stuff because, you mm -hmm. know, as you guys have seen doing all your watches and doing all these ROV dives, there's a lot of stuff where like, wait, what is that? Yeah. You know, and um, there's still a lot of questions to be answered. So why do coral sit where they sit? Why do sponges grow like they grow? Why do polychaetes live in you know, here, why do, you know, all these mm -hmm. various things. So there's lots of whys, and I think we're always constantly um, bringing in new people to ask new questions, and and sometimes we get it wrong. I think that's the thing that people mm -hmm. misunderstand about science, just because we think we have a hypothesis and we think, feel like we've proven that hypothesis, it doesn't mean somebody else can't come along and continue that work and come up with right. a new hypothesis and come to a different conclusion. So yeah, um, absolutely. I think the more open-minded everybody is, Holotharian, about their work and collaboration and sharing information, the more we'll learn about our planet. It's also great to, to meet people from different backgrounds and to Ooh. sort of combine that knowledge and Ooh, look at this is a pretty spot. Ooh, is that Beautiful. Metallicorgia? Or is that Janiculata? How do you and tell the And the Bathy Pathies? Question mark. <laughs> I can do things at like the level of Chrysogorgia and um, maybe bamboo coral <laughs> and black coral. <laughs> and that is <laughs> honestly <laughs> enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like my ID has gotten better over the course of this cruise, but I'm also maybe more unsure of my IDs now because the more I see, the more I'm like, oh, these look really similar. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how confident I am that this is actually like what I would guess it is. So I'm just going to say hi to Steve who detail. said hi Deb on the chat. But so. we're close on our port side. I've also yep. sailed with Steve a number of times so yep. it's a pleasure to be at sea with and always great to have here in the back <coughs> back pocket in the chat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Steve. <laughs> it's a cool ridge. It looks like a bolosoma sponge over there to the left. Oh wow. Yep. Ten meters left. Oh, be huge. So, what are these long, stringy oh, ones? Run out so you can the get back ones. Those, I think, are primnoid whips, primnoid or at least looks like those it comes are. To a pinnacle um, right that's what at. I've been seeing right. when comes we to a pinnacle zoom right in on them. Hmm. And also, I think what yeah, Ryan see over has it. been. Bro observing so one in doubt um <laughs> from noid whip right now <laughs> cool yeah and um just so everybody knows this is jules um she is e expedition watch lead whatever we're calling it watch lead this little watch <laughs> expedition she's watch flying lead. she's flying solo here without, flying uh, solo without adam, adam. <clears throat> I don't know, we have chat sitting in asking <laughs> what Adam is. Your mic is sparking. <laughs> Adam is sleeping. He Adam, is, uh, he's Adam is fine. And Adam, Adam is fine. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Adam is okay. He, uh, he had, I was up at a very middle of the night, not his watch time for a um, ship to shore connection, a very important tell? one. So he, um, I think, went to bed at like 5.30. Ouch. But who knows, he might be listening from his cabin, so. <laughs> um, Just a nose Steve, sticking out is there. Is that, yep. uh, Brian told me they've been seeing Calyptrophora. Um, 
is Oof. that what this coral right here is? There you go. Do you want to take right a look? Right where? Right um, by way. Sorry. The wispy looking thing? Yes, yeah. the wispy looking thing. That's a sacocalyx sponge. Can you zoom in again, Dave? Probably another amphidocello over there. Oh, this looks like a uh, bamboo, actually. Yeah. Yes, this is a nodal bamboo. The power of zoom. Like hiding underneath the ledge According there. According to yeah. Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta back <laughs> off from the wall a little bit. Um. Wow, look at that. Oh, pretty, pretty. Yeah, the RV peekaboo is not. <laughs> Give it to a minimal. <laughs> <laughs> no. ROV hide and seek. <laughs> Not the game we like to play. <laughs> Very cool shot, though, in Atlanta. That's amazing. All right, can we uh, zoom in again, Dave? What's the dominant species that you see here, Jules? Um, it looks like there's, well, this is looking more like a perp node. Um, the coral we zoomed on just before this was Akinella, which is a uh, bamboo coral. It looks like there's a lot of perp nodes up here. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, don't look get, at that. Sorry, Too close. Gotta, we're, uh, yeah, we got to get over this. Okay. We got to get you in front. Wow. Um, look at that. Sorry. Ooh. So I think this is the clip trophora that was being referenced earlier. This is the best spot. Oh, Ex Ooh. oh wow. Is that a sponge over there? <laughs> yes. <gasps> oh, wow. Can we look at massive sponge, please? Uh, oh, man. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, find a comfortable spot. Um, Steve says Norella, Calyptrophora, Candidella, among others. Ooh, do you see that big yellow one off to the left? Yeah, that looks like a, another bamboo. This one here? Yeah. Science, is there any chance you'd want to sample anything here? Um, negative, unless Steve would like something. Okay. Wow, that is a really cool sponge. <laughs> hey, zoom in, Dave. <laughs> What are you? It's got such a different, like, um, I don't know, specular growth to it. Like, Yeah. It looks, oh, this looks really familiar. Um, I was flipping through a million sponge IDs yesterday. So there's something I hadn't, we don't see very often. Um, let me go back to that guy. Are you like uh, near the bottom? Yes, you oh, are. I am. Yep. All right. If we're gonna look 16. around here, we need to reposition yeah. the okay. ship. Yeah. I'm at uh, single digits, high single and digits, but single it's digits. possible it could be a polyop gun, but that's very low confidence. So, science, do you want to stay in this area, or we can um, on? yeah, let's poke around. What is this? Well, we need okay. to reposition yeah. the ship. Oh, okay. Is so the it's, point. it's gonna add about ten minutes to gotcha. just getting okay. set up again. Um. Yeah, we can we can move on if necessary. Well, we can move the ship back. It's just we yeah. can't just we can't do what we're currently doing. Okay. <laughs> um, we can continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I need to zip before I get I get yanked here.
chat is wondering um, what uh, um, what came of the mystery animal bones from a few days ago. Um, mystery animal bones, bones, uh, assumed to be some type of mammal skull. Um, although we'll need to send it back to an expert who can uh, identify it further. Um, and we did find some uh, skull eating or <laughs> decomposing uh, worms Worm, right, right. associated. And apparently this is uh, pretty outside the range that they've been seen in. So that's pretty cool. Um, that looks like it could have been a bolosoma. Noted. That looks like a raw salad down there. I think that that sponge could have been in the family Urididae. A uh, Cornelasma species, maybe. What was that? Uh, co this. Can I? Oh check yeah. Out my screen? Yeah. Awesome. Possible. like things are picking up. Are all of these primroids? Ooh, uh, there is a coral just to the right. Are we caught up enough to zoom in? Yep. Awesome, thank you. This looks like a paragorgia. Um, I believe these are. There is a cliff right behind me. From <coughs> Okay. Thank you. Just as That's a cool uh, I think you're sitting in place, and yep. we're gonna wait yep. before we move the ship. Do you need to zoom on that? Um, I think I, I'm good. We can keep moving. All right. Yeah, I can see the polyps from here. They look bubblegum y. That's a big one. Looks like another Uplex. Another Orca. Okay. Atlanta Cam. Ooh. Nice boulders. And also. Huge boulders. Oh, that's what I'm going with. I would love these boulders. <laughs> <laughs> you going to land it? Just don't zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not zoomed in. No, I mean manual zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to straighten out my tether. You anywhere. can come up. Yeah, no, I can, yeah. Yeah. Right now I'm sort of going uh, on on thickness to distinguish between um, primnoids and bamboos as we just pass over. So the bamboos tend to have fleshier polyps. Um, primnoids have these interesting looking sclerites and polyps that are slightly smaller. Bamboo will also have uh, a bit of a pinkish tint sometimes. This is a pretty nice wall that you're coming up on. Looks like there's a Sacocalyx coming up to the right of us. Past it in the very bottom right of the screen. Where is it? 
Oh, we don't need to zoom on it. I was just noting where it was because oh, okay. I saw it in the still cam. <laughs> For anybody annotating this later on, <laughs> there was a Saco Calyx, and it was in the lower right corner of the screen. Yeah, but nice you have to bowler. remember they're not going to see that. Yeah. They're only going to see that, <laughs> so it's sometimes worth pointing the camera at it so they see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I forget that, and then I'm like, oh, yeah. there's this coral, and I'm like, oh. Uh, that looks like a Chrysis. Um, Zoom in, Dave. Chrysogorgia. What is the one that it looks like? Chrysis or... Um, stay tuned. Stellata. Chrysis or Stellata. Oh, it is. It's hard to differentiate between the two. Good. Yep, good. Thank you. Hi. Crises and Stellata belong to two different uh, genera of Chrysogorgids. Um, but they look very similar. Just kidding, they belong to the same genera. <laughs> Telling lies. Ooh, we have a we have questions from chat. Um, so this one, how often after the academic works produced out of Nautilus explorations are published open are open to the public or are published online? Um, essentially all of the cruise data is made available to the public. Um, after some period of time so really anyone can use this data if you're interested in um, what we're seeing here um, you could absolutely um, pursue your Zoom your own in research there. in this area if you have the means to do so this looks like metallogorgia and then any publications um, that come out of or that include data from Nautilus um, we'll highlight on our social media or on our website um, nautiluslive.org under the science and tech tab um, but it can take months to years for um, mm -hmm. for scientists to to use that data um, in publication so it's it's exciting years later you know finding out that something we collected or a sample we collected or you know video footage we shot um, ends up leading to a discovery or, you know, another piece of knowledge being added. Awesome. Thank you so much, Samantha. Um, oh, Jules, yeah. as well. Um, this is also for you. Um, so we have our Friday Harbor students tuning in, and they just completed a eDNA um, lab, and they were cool. wondering um, if there has been or will be any DNA, e DNA sampling on this cruise, yes. Um, but can you talk about um, maybe the purpose of DNA, e DNA, and what scientists are specifically maybe looking for? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's really cool that you're doing e DNA labs. Um, yes. So we are collecting e DNA on this cruise. Um, so we're taking Niskin bottle samples. Um, and then we are going back to the lab. We are filtering that water onto a very small filter. And then that filter is what is used to analyze the DNA. Um, so animals will shed 
cells into the water column just naturally. Um, much like us, we shed hair and skin cells and those cells contain our DNA. Um, so the hope is that um, by looking at the DNA in the water column that we'll be able to um, tell what types of things, what types of organisms are living in close proximity. Um, so we also take blank Niskin samples um, to sort of account for, you could call it background noise. Um, yeah, yeah, so really neat. Um, relatively new research happening right now on eDNA. Um, very cool stuff. One of the cool things about eDNA is that it's a very non-invasive way to tell uh, the kind of species that we have without having to take actual samples of the species. Right, yes. right. We Absolutely. can just take a water sample and get it from there. Um, just circling back to, to publications from this data, um, Brian actually uh, published a paper with um, Randy Rochin on the impact of geological feature shape on the abundance and diversity of deep sea corals. Um, that was, was published in December of 2022, and I believe it was on um, using data from an expedition in 2021. So that is sort of an example of the time scale that people are working on. Um, we do a lot of really cool things on the ship, but there's a lot that goes into this um, after the fact. Thank you so much, Jules. Um, let me see here. Oh, and then regarding our ROVs, uh, we do have our new viewers tuning in and are wondering um, the difference between Herc and Atalanta and what is the function of Atalanta specifically. <laughs> I'd like to start by saying that um, <laughs> Argus is fine. <laughs> Argus is fine. Argus is fine. Argus is Chat. fine. Yep. It's on we deck. We have to start there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, underneath our, our yellow crane. Um, so the purpose of Atalanta or Argus uh, is to, if it's one of its primary purposes is to take the heave of the ship um, on the wire and uh, kind of absorb that shock load so that Hercules can go around uh, unencumbered by the heave of the wire <coughs> and uh, and kind of do his, his uh, exploration and, and zoom in on the different objects. Uh, without Atlanta on the wire, Herc will get kind of tugged around all over the place, and the images that we see from Herc uh, would not be as clear and crisp. So, the uh, second duty of Atlanta or Argus is to kind of act as a guide for Herc, uh, like a bird's eye view. So, if there are any kind of obstructions or overhangs uh, or if there's any large specimens that are out there uh, that we can see. Um, we kind of give the, the Hercules pilot a heads up and say, hey, there's there's a, a overhang coming up or there's a wall coming up and that gives them, you know, a little bit more of a heads up versus uh, just kind of running running into a wall uh, when they're close, close in viewed on their camera. And then uh, Thirdly is uh, the viewpoints uh, from Atalanta or Argus. Uh, we're able to actually zoom, zoom on this, in please? on Hercules and uh, get those really nice uh, third person view shots of Hercules doing its work. So I think this could be a sea spider. Yeah. Pick Wait, what? Oh, yes. I mean, come on, see, look at that. Is it feeding on um, a sponge? A sponge. <laughs> it looks like it might be. What? Uh, yeah, I did not snack. know that Actually, sponges. is that a sponge? I gotcha. That kind of or looks like a holothurian. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it sure does. Oh. That's on awesome. a holothurian? Was yeah. it caught in midwater? Whoa. Probably. Oh. Look, it's nice. It's almost like a 
caught in its web, but it's not really yeah. a web. <laughs> oh my. That's really cool. Welcome to the early morning horror show. <laughs> <laughs> Nature is Everybody's got to eat now, people. Everybody's wow. got to eat. That's the circle of That's life. That's fascinating, though. Must have super fascinating. I've never seen this before. No. Forget that. Oh. It's so. Um. It looks like <laughs> it's a. It, it's so hungry. <laughs> Is that what you're gonna say? Um, <laughs> I don't know how I was gonna finish that. What is? I feel like there's some interesting angles happening. Like, what are those like squiggly, darker orange parts? What is that all about? I those two in the front are the feeding appendages. Oh, see the little okay. claw on the end of the yeah there yeah. Not sure what the back two are. Yeah. Maybe to hold it in place. It has some sea schmutz on its legs. Mm -hmm. I wonder how long it's been sitting here. Steve said the uh, it's the dark orange is what is stuck into the prey. Yeah. Oh my like gosh. The vertical. Mm -hmm. Do they have fangs? Or do they have? What do they have? Good question. I've never seen one up close. Is this as far as we can zoom, Dave? Just curious. Yep. Okay. I could try and get closer. But it's okay. Just I'm kind I of glad for that. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of what? I think I've seen all I <laughs> just would like to see this. Kind of glad that we can't see it closer. <laughs> we can get closer. No, it's all right. <laughs> I'm for it, Robert. We'll jump out at you. Don't worry. Yeah, about it. I mean, doesn't it look so like it's, it's going to it. <laughs> jump jump at you at any time? Yeah, well, I think if we get much closer, we might blow them off that rock. So I'm yeah. going to have be dreams really about this. I think. One second of oh silence for the holotarian. I know. Pouring out for the holotarian. I mean, we don't have a moment of silences for, like, Oreos, so it's okay. <laughs> you might not, but I do. <laughs> the oh, Chaos oh, Crew oh. does. Wait, wait, wait. We're annoying him. No, we it. <laughs> this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> He's just having breakfast like the rest of us. I'm going to reset the DVL while we're here. Yeah. I Holothurian did eat bacon, bacon this morning, so land pig versus sea pig, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Now Where we can finally I? say it's oh the bacon of the sea. Oh. <laughs> Chat, we are currently looking at sea spider predate. Oh, crazy fortune. A sea spider consuming a holothurian. Yes. Okay, with the move. Moment of You're silence gotcha. for our... Holothurian friend. Good back here. Betty. Thank you, back here, Ruth. Any do you have special words? Three zero meters, yes, zero two um, five. Our Holothurian friend lived a long life, a sweet life. Another Holothurian. <laughs> <laughs> that one's next. Oh no. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Dangerous area to live in. Swim <laughs> away. Uh, oh, um, what's this uh, three prong? They move very fast. Oh yeah, what's that? Is that a coral in the back? Three prong coral. Oh, oh, let's look at that. It looks like it could be um, a bellopathies, a black coral. Interesting. Can I touch the screen? Yeah, touch this. You get a poke. <laughs> Have you poked before? Circle. Deb, you only get a certain number of pokes, so you gotta use them well. Yeah, they say that, but they can't <laughs> stop us back here. If for every... Uh, every hour? Is no, no. If, well, well if for every, every draw. Hour, but for every good pun you uh, deliver, you get extra pokes. And uh, for every bad pun, uh, okay. you lose <laughs> pokes. Lose no, pokes. Really but, um, um, <laughs> oh, this is cool. What is it? Um, it looks like umbrella pathies. Umbrella pathies? Umbrella pathies. And something else next and to something it. Something else? Uh, from Noid stock, looks like. Mm. All right. All right. Now, oh, Atlanta is really stirring up sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> I 
again, side, side yeah. to the slope, that's no good. No. Yeah, we're almost at the top of this uh, <coughs> first ledge, I suppose. Oh. If you give it any horizontal, it goes right into this side of the hill. Mm. You mean it's not at Atlanta? Lateral. <laughs> <laughs> the secret's out. <laughs> Did you just say add a lateral? Add a lateral. Add a lateral? Dave, if you want to throw the multi beam up, I can uh, show people where we're at. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll have to find it first. Okay. <coughs> How many layers does that map have? The, uh, the, this map? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have seen like multiple better magic maps. Oh, wow. Uh, MB acquisition? MB proc. MB proc. Very cool. Right. Ah, uh, there we go. So just to give some context for the people at home, this is Google Earth, and we have the Hawaiian island chains to the north here, and, and we zoom bring in. Bring your mic a little closer, Deb. If we zoom there. into the uh, south here, we are down here in the Line Islands, and we are currently um, diving on this site 1110, and we're just off this um, southern ledge of this uh, guillot. And when you bring it up in Fleeter Mouse, you can see this was the path that we took. So we started down on the south um, yesterday. And now we are just about at this coming up over the top of this uh, ledge. And then there'll be another big mound that will climb up ahead. Um, but it's quite a unique feature. And yeah, there are lots of layers. Um, you can create different color scales. So this is all the same data, but it's showing different things. Um, the light green, light blue data in the background is existing bathymetry. The sort of blue coloring behind was a slope map. So this shows us um, where there are actually um, slopes on the, on the um, oh, nice. edge. And so r darker reds are the slopes. The white lines are the contours, they're 100 meters. And then I've got on top the close-up of this dive area. So this is colored blue to red is shallow and blue is deep. Um, and you can see the color scale up at the top. So red is close up to like 1,600 meters. And we started about 2,400 meters. So wow, we're just amazing. coming up over the top here. Very interesting. Um, so you can see this was waypoint uh, five is just up on the ledge here. And we are somewhere right on this face. This was four and five. So what is the resolution of the maps? So this grid that you're looking at here now is a 30 meter grid. So each of the boxes of the grid is 30 meters by 30 meters. Um, the grid in the very far background is 100 meters. Oh, wow. um, so, you know, features. If I turn off this, turn off this higher resolution grid, um, it's a really big difference on the details. Yeah, and turn off the slope map. Oh, wow. <gasps> and turn on. This, oops, so many layers. <laughs> I saw Megan's post. Um, what's with what's with the tiger scratches? Tiger scratches. Like, oh, you know, yesterday. tiger scratches equals when mapping. It's it's, it's not oh. the data is yeah. fake formations. Like when is this not registering? When is it when you're mapping and it. It won't properly 
map, maybe due to weather. Data, 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 like, yeah, dropouts in the data. So you can look at, um, um, let's see if I could bring this up. I've lost track of, you mean sort of like, I'm not sure what's making this black background. Sorry, let me turn things off for a okay. second, make this image look a little bit clearer because there's a lot of stuff going on here. I think what you're talking about is when you get air under the transducer, um, it causes dropouts in the data. Oh, um, okay. So you get what this, is this what you're talking about, sort of this tiger striping? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when, you, um, when you're going in a direction that the ship is pitching quite a bit, you get a lot of air under the, that follows along, bubbles follow along the hull of the transducer, and it creates noise. And so you get what we call blowouts, or basically it's a lot of noise data. And when you clean that out, it creates gaps in the data. Um, so it's one of the challenges mapping out here, finding a direction that um, you can go in, and south and west are really great, but um, if we went south and west forever, we would just be going around the planet and not stay in, a, stay in an area. So unfortunately, you have to go north and east occasionally, um, and those lines create a lot more um, noise and gaps. And so there are ten times where we'll um, have to backtrack on data that we've collected to fill in those gaps. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. So cool. It's amazing how much information you can get. Yeah, and like, and it's, it's, um, what do you think? So, you know, as, um, we continue to map the seafloor and technology is constantly evolving. And so when the mapping, mapping tech, um, continues to evolve, we'll be able to get more details in the future, right? Yeah, so that has sort of progressed. You know, um, I think I was he hearing Adam talk about it a little bit yesterday, but, um, you know, when we when sailors and explorers first started out on ships, they used what we called lead line. So you chuck a, chuck a rope <laughs> or a line mm -hmm. over, the ship, over the side of the boat, and you um, call out. They used to tie knots in it, and they would call out... Um, how far, how many knots it was to, till it got slack, so how deep it was. And so oh, that's wow. what they did before we had sounders. And then we went to um, sort of single beam sounders, um, which will basically just tell you the depth underneath the hull. And then we progressed on to multi-beam sonars. So we, these sonars get um, over 400 beams across. So we can map somewhere um, on the order of four to five kilometers across um, at our widest swath. Wow. So, um, and then with the advancement of having autonomous underwater vehicles, we can now send robots, essentially autonomous robots, to the seafloor. So we're never probably going to, I and mean, I would say never, but um, the matter of a ship being 5,000 meters above the seafloor, there's only so much you can do with the amount of sound you can push out and how wide and, and what you can receive back. But if you take that and, say, put the ship at the seafloor, and you do that by using an AUV or something um, autonomous or an ROV that has a sounder on it, you get it closer to the seafloor, then you can get a higher resolution. Um, and so the combination of having this sort of bigger picture from ships and then sending out autonomous vehicles with high resolution sonars um, to get, you know, a little bit better picture on a certain area um, is I see is will be advanced. And then kind of the latest technology that is being implemented on a number of actual vehicles within OECI is um, a SAS, a synthetic aperture sonar. So it gives you um, sort of centimeter precision on things. So you can actually see um, see coral or oyster beds oh, or things on wow. um, in, in features, depending on oh. how close you get to it. So yeah, wow. it's really interesting technology. Um, and you, it's sort of like the next phase in side scan, but sort of tangentially. I'm not as familiar with SAS data and the way it works specifically, but um, but it it gives you a really great high resolution image of of everything all the way out to the edge of your swath, and a swath being like the width of the track, your across track. 
Wow, another massive sacrocalyx sponge. It's cool. What is that? It's like a feather attached. Oh, it's the yeah. feather star. Yep. <laughs> I was like, it's like a feather. Oh, it is a feather star. It just looked like a bird feather for a second. I was like, that's <laughs> yeah. really bizarre. These dark ones are really neat. I haven't seen them this dark before. Yeah. I'm used to the red ones. We also have a question uh, regarding the... Okay, so um, are you able to use um, LiDAR mapping tech in the ocean? Yeah, actually there um, has been a number of different places. So LiDAR, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, is um, is using light as opposed to using lasers um, and light as opposed to sound. Um, it has some limitations, um, much like um, uh, using light in the water. Um, it's an actual green laser because it can oh. penetrate the um, wavelengths of the water, but it does have limitations in terms of how deep it can see. Um, so if you're, it, a lot of LIDAR is collected from airborne airplanes. Um, you can do it also from a ship, but, um, but primarily a lot of the LIDAR you find is a lot of, along coastlines and shallow water. So they do a lot of LIDAR on shallow water coral reefs and atolls and things that you can kind of see that first um, 60, 70, 80 meters of depth. Um, and so I actually worked in Australia the last couple of years and we had some LIDAR data on top of the coral reefs. So it was nice that we could map to the edge of that LIDAR data with the ship. Um, I believe there is LIDAR data that was collected um, um, Sorry, I lost track of where I was going with that. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, it's used a lot in that sort of coastline um, coastline of observing. If the water is really murky or muddy or sand, like stirred up, then it's harder to see through. Oh, so okay. if it's um, very sediment laden. Um, Can we zoom on this, please? Then it's something orange. In this. Harder to see. But it also creates like a 3D point cloud or a 3D um, representation of the An of the seafloor. Fly trap, mm -hmm. or as I like to call it, tri tri flap. Tri flap. There we tri go. <laughs> okay, this is a bamboo coral. Yeah, this is um, Achenella. Got it. Cool, thank you. I was hoping it was a little orange jelly. Mm. We also have our, um, thank you, and we also have our Friday Harbor students. They have several questions, I believe. Um, they're wondering how much navigation is being done with the ROVs based on the vehicle sonar? That's a good question. Um, we are definitely monitoring the sonars. Uh, I'll, I'll start answering this question about the road over <laughs> to, to Robert and Mike. Um, but we're definitely monitoring the sonar, but to, to determine vehicle position, we're using USBL, which is an ultra short baseline, um, and, the and the DVL, which is Doppler velocity log. Um, so two uh, acoustic sensors that are uh, the USBL uh, is basically sending pings to the ship, back and forth from the ship, um, and the DVL is doing the same on the seafloor. So we're using yeah, both of those to determine around. position on the seafloor. No, wow, really large corals. Yeah. And then RV, how are you using the sonar to, to navigate while you're driving? Uh, well, when you look at the sonar, it's uh, it's uh, oriented not north, you know, how do you call it, uh, compass directed. It's vehicle oriented, so the, the view there is from the front These of the vehicle at the top. These are mainly prime lights? Yeah. Prime lights? Yeah. Prime lights? These are more Akinella. Akinella. Sorry. Got it out. No, so are you, so you're looking oh, for, like, what are you looking for in the sonar? What are you, what information are you getting from it that can, determines can, where you go? Uh, we can see the, the terrain ahead, so we can see when there's a cliff edge coming up, or 
looking for the returns will show rocks if you're on a sandy bottom. Uh, we have another sonar in front of us that's pointed a little bit down in, in front of Hercules and that shows really small objects. So that's pretty handy if you're looking for little tiny rock outcrops or parts to airplanes or whatever. Which is not what we're doing right now, just to be clear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And then, well, I, I think this is all regards to our... I'm just going to read the question. The ship move so has stopped, but we'll let you get ahead before I put on another. Yeah. And then, um, do gaming skills help when it comes to being a good ROV pilot? Inquiring biology students <laughs> might want to know. Uh, I would definitely say. So the question is, does gaining skills? Gaming. 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 Ah. Video gaming. <laughs> oh. Uh, I won't confirm nor deny it. <laughs> uh, I would say that uh, having played video games for a good portion of uh, my life. Uh, it has helped uh, kind of be able to control, especially with the uh, hand-eye coordination. So um, there is a, definitely a bit difference between the two of them. Um, I got a, I got a zip. Yeah, a zip but I would say if uh, between gaming or uh, I mean, looking at other other hobbies such as uh, RC cars, RC planes. Uh, and that those kind of things, I'd say the uh, increasing your hand-eye coordination definitely helps. So, so another thing you get, because that's definitely true, another thing you get is a ability to, to like navigate in space. Yeah. You know, uh, like a, a really good thing is like uh, like dungeon games. You have to like keep in your mind like you went this way and you went that way. And you know what I mean? Right. Escape room. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. actually never done one. I don't know if that's true. There are actually a few yeah. ROV uh, piloting video games out there now um, that you can play with. Really? Mm -hmm. That's oh, interesting. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so. And then on another note, um, Yes, chat. This is our last dive and eight to twelve watch. I'm um, eight to twelve watch. Um, last watch. Um, the question is: Will we be back, or will the team be back to explore the Pacific, or is the ship going elsewhere? Uh, after this expedition, yes, we will be returning to Honolulu, mm -hmm. and then the ship will be uh, heading out actually transiting back to uh, British Columbia Ooh. Uh, in Vancouver Island, where we'll make port in Sydney, uh, which is just north of Victoria. And we'll be working with partners at Ocean Networks Canada uh, for several weeks and then returning back to Hawaii. Um, so Ocean Networks Canada is a, a research organization out of the University of Victoria, and we've been working with them for many years. I think this will be our seventh year. Um, seventh or eighth year working together. Um, and we help uh, Ocean Networks Canada maintain their 800 kilometer uh, seafloor observatory. So they have a 800 kilometer cabled, um, cabled network. So basically cable on the seafloor with power uh, and data capability. So they're able to plug in different scientific instruments along the cable um, at different habitats in the deep sea. So uh, there's like some instruments at hydrothermal vents, there's some on the abyssal plane, um, and we help uh, provide maintenance and um, repairs and plug in new instruments, take out old instruments um, to help them maintain that whole network system. We're also doing a little bit of cable laying with a second ship, so we'll actually have two, we'll have Nautilus and a cable laying ship right next to it working in tandem. Um, so there's more information about that on the Nautilus Live website, but we'll be um, 
there's about a nine, 10 day transit out to British Columbia. And wow. then we'll be out there for a few weeks and then come back to Hawaii and continue our season um, in the Central Pacific again. But definitely would recommend folks um, watching to tune in for that expedition. It's a much different pace than what you're seeing now. Um, it's an entirely an engineering focused cruise. And when we're in port in, um, in Sydney, we'll load the entire back deck, every, every available space <laughs> on the back deck uh, with equipment um, wow. that will be overboarded. So it's, it's kind of exciting to see we leave port with a full deck and we come back with, with a lot less. Um, I know Mike's looking forward to <laughs> throwing a lot of things over. <laughs> is that a whole tree? Oh, fly trap. That is a fly, fly trap. trap. Fly trap. <laughs> Thank you, like Samantha, for um, elaborating. Um, okay. Eating its way to the top. Really cool rock face. Yeah. Primnoid whip. Primnoid whip. Hmm? Primnoid whip. It does look like a primnoid. Yeah. Looks like it's working its way down. Can hold fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh, I still yeah. don't understand I it was how it's spinning, down. really. Yeah. Are we happy for another move? Yep. Bridge nav. Three zero meters, zero two five. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going to go, go do some mapping data. Thanks Aww. for joining us, Deb. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for Deb. joining us, Deb. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, large tunicate. Was going to answer all of our mapping oh, wow, that's the largest tunicate I've ever seen. Can we look at this tunicate, please? Yep. Are you looking in the still cam? No, it's right here. Where are you looking? Oh, oh, right yeah. Front of my face. <laughs> oh, I love these predatory yeah. tuna kits. Wow, it's so cool. Wow, <laughs> it is huge. Whoa. Oh, to my spots. Whoa, it's very cool. <laughs> Bless you. Bless. <laughs> Salud. I, I didn't say it. Supposed to. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. That's a huge tunicate. <laughs> 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 Who yesterday said, may God bless you? Was that Mike? I am not Oh, you. no. I would never say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I typically say. How, how would you? I would typically say, bless your soul. But in oh, what that's what you said. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. What tone? <laughs> bless your soul. And yeah, a little I bit more metal of a town. <laughs> <laughs> I shorten it to bless. How come it's only sneezes? Like, there's no, there's no <laughs> True. I've thought about that before. <laughs> like, when someone coughs, I'm tempted. This poor predatory <laughs> tunica is like, can you guys just look at me for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Give it attention. <laughs> These are amazing That's animals. Isn't yeah. the, isn't the, the uh, old thought process that your heart stops when you sneeze? Oh. No. <laughs> I still don't get it. That ship move is in, by the way. So we'll want to keep moving if we want to stay ahead of Yep. The game. All right, we good on Carry that. on. Thank you. We do have a question for uh, Robert. Um, so uh -huh. you mentioned yesterday that you were going to work on the Alvin. Can you uh, elaborate on what you'll be doing? Our viewers are curious. Like what the that cruise is about? Yeah, what you'll be doing on, Honestly, on Alvin. I don't know. <laughs> Chat, Chat limited, stay tuned. Limited, <laughs> the, just drive the bus. <laughs> You're living in the moment. <laughs> no, I think it's a, it's a mud cruise, so it's a lot of, t we're going to do a whole bunch of tube cores. Ah, okay. And Alvin can be loaded up with a mess of them, like 32 or so. It's good for taking tube cores. Ooh, some more emission cores.
Can we zoom in, Dave? There are a lot of corals that I say are my favorite corals, but these ones are really neat. Atomasis? Mm hmm. Two of them? Two. They're really close. They look pretty happy. Right? I think they're, um, I think this is a meat cute. Aww. <laughs> a coral meat cute. Hey, we haven't done a word of the day in a while. Oh, yeah. Wow. I think we like haven't. Two days ago. Annie, what's the word of the day? Word of the day. Word of the day, according to our friend Miriam Webster. <laughs> um, Miriam. Okay. Oh, sat. Bra. Hold on. Sat Saturine? Saturine or yeah. Saturnine. Yeah, Saturine? Saturine. Yeah. Saturine? Yeah. Saturnine. Is that like gloomy? Yeah. yeah. What? It's okay. Wow. Wow. I am impressed. Describes people who are, uh, yeah, glum or and grumpy. Gloom. Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> or things that suggest or express gloom. It can also mean slow to act or change. Hmm. Oh, wow. Can we zoom in, Dave? A bamboo whip. These are all very healthy around here. Hmm, yeah. Things are going well in this neck of the woods. More Akinella? Yeah, we've seen um, Except for that bit. increase in yeah. biodiversity. We've definitely seen an increase in coral, but right, right. I feel like biodiversity has remained pretty constant. Well, I guess that does have right. to do with abundance, too. So, yeah. So Maybe the coral density is higher, but density. the diversity There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Great. That's the word. Okay. Biodiverse ecosystems are stronger on the whole because they are able to fill different niches in the ecosystem, uh, perform different functions, and are able to adapt to change better. So seamounts are considered hot spots for biodiversity. Um, a big part of this is heterogeneity so there are a lot of different types of geological features. Um, there's variation in uh, substrate type and rock type, um, and they rise through the water column, so there's also different amounts of flow. Um, so they support a, a wide range of species. Um, and that is part of why it's so important to study them um, so that we can understand them better and um, protect these ecosystems. Um, it'll inform things like where we, where we designate sanctuaries and uh, marine monuments, like the, the proposed marine sanctuary in the, um, the Pacific remote island island area within the US EEZ. I predict there's going to be a bunch of them up there. What are you predicting? There's going to be a lot of coral right up there. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. It has been predicted. It has to happen now. <laughs> One of the reasons, or uh, hypothesize reasons why we see so many corals and sponges on seamounts is because they are filter feeders. Mm. So they're dependent on the particles flowing through the water column um, for energy. And these corals, 
which um, are photosynthetic in the photic zone, are relying solely on um, on filter feeding for energy. So seamounts um, affect how how water flows through the water column. There are areas of increased flow, um, and they also provide a hard surface for them to attach to. And then corals and sponges, in turn, provide habitat for other right. organisms, um, as well as a source of food. And they filter the surrounding water and convert um, carbon to other types of molecules. Right. They play a role in carbon cycling. Yeah, the deep sea plays an enormous role in um, the regulation of our climate. It is uh, the largest carbon storage um, on, on Earth. Um, the deep sea is relatively stable in terms of temperature and salinity and density and uh, there's little flow of water and so carbon falls through the water column in the form of marine snow um, and will stay here for very a very long time, very large time scales. Um, and then that material is subducted back into the crust and um, ends up back at the surface and the cycle repeats. You know, oh, what are we looking at? This is Aconella. Aconella. It is a type of uh, nodal branching bamboo coral. You know, it's really interesting um, just being in the classroom and how, like, when I, and this was brought up in a conversation before, of how um, when I asked the questions, um, when I ask my students to take a guess of mm -hmm. where we get majority of our oxygen from and they um, automatically divert to trees and yeah, instead right. of, you know, um, but we're surrounded, we're an island surrounded by the ocean. Like we know, we, we know about the ocean, but we don't fully realize or they don't really realize that <laughs> the ocean plays a big part of our survival and they don't realize that. So when I tell them that the ocean provides majority of our oxygen, they're just yeah. like, Pfft. they don't believe me at first, like they're dumbfounded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when you think about it, the surface of the ocean is much larger than land surface. Right, right. More of the U.S. is ocean than land. Um, so algae are actually the, the provide the largest portion of, of oxygen through photosynthesis. Um, but when we think about photosynthesis, I feel like, um, at least when you're younger, you just think about like forests and right, right. Um, although Ooh. that is very important. Um, the ocean provides us with a lot of different services that we need to survive. Um, coral reefs, especially. And these ecosystems have value that is not related to, to us at all. I think that we tend to have that view of like, what can the ocean do for us? But um, I think that the value of the ocean is intrinsic and um, not just in relation to how, to, to what we can get from it. Right. Um, the ocean supports so much life and um, yeah. It's just we, we know so little about it, too, and there's so many 
fascinating things down here at the bottom of the ocean and we know we've seen more of the moon than we have of the deep sea and that's right. just really mind blowing it is i agree <laughs> startled you <laughs> french now <laughs> So, what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Three zero meters, zero two five. <laughs> I want to talk about ship moves. <laughs> Not talk about them, I just want to How them. far have we gone, Samantha? Just yeah. curious. Uh, Samantha oh. didn't earn that award Average. for nothing. Average. I thought we were doing pretty good. Zoom in, Dave. Me too. I'm not even sure if I actually won an award. I just got the reserved seat oh, <laughs> that okay. goes to awarded members. <laughs> you were a keynote speaker. That's true. Yeah. I think I missed the actual award ceremony. Oh. <laughs> probably because I was at You were seat. probably on your way to the next <laughs> waypoint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happens all the time. Uh, <laughs> we have gone 300 meters oh. in an hour 40. That's pretty bad, even for us. <laughs> you know, at this point, I'm for surprised. some reason, I thought we were doing better. Yeah, than me too. It was a false optimism. Uh, well, we've been moving along, but we've been going upslope and having to catch up fairly often. So okay, true. It's not the destination. It's, it's the, the journey. journey. It's the ship moves. <laughs> it's the ship moves. <laughs> it's not the horizontal gains. It's the vertical gains. It's the gains. vertical. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting X sponge that we just passed. Formerly known as sponge. <laughs> Formerly polyopagon. I miss Adam. Adam had all up? the jokes. Let's wake him up. Adam! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't leave any behind, written out, in the back row? Yeah, even no, though, like, he left me with nothing. I have to create all my own content. <laughs> Original content. It's hard. Back it a lot of silence. Back row? Uh, Annie, yep. Jules, do you want to look for a picture? Oh, oh no. yes. Oh, yeah. Last dive. We zoom in. <coughs> Should we get closer? <laughs> I think so, actually. Do you want together? Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, we can. I want to make. Oh, come closer. Beautiful. So when I get back home, my plan is to make T-shirts. <laughs> Chaos crew, I think we and need a good picture before. Possibly send them out. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I'm gonna make T-shirts, multiple actually. What are they going to say? Um, so first much. one is I will find you and I will identify you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that's, that. what Joel, that's what Joel said in the beginning of the Throwback. the cruise. And then there's Team Zoom and Dave, and then there's Let's Go, and then the SMA Association. Yeah, the SMA, SMA Association. <laughs> I'll get you the the. So vector for four t-shirts. I think one t-shirt, just all of them. All of them. Oh, it's so mean, Dave. So mean, mm -hmm. Dave. What else is there? Metallic gorgeous. Or Team Metallic Chaos gorgeous. too. Also, that's five t-shirts. Flap. Okay. ADHD crew. ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> the watch with many names. Oh my goodness. All the way down. All the way down. Yeah. Oh, we just passed uh, some sort of black coral. It kind of looks like uh, bathy pathies. Bathy pathies. We don't Got have it. to go back. We can okay. keep going. Onwards. Ten Onwards. meters left. Let's add another move in. Yes. Bridge now. What's the fastest we can go? <laughs> do, and do we want to try it? Meters. Add another Full three speed zero ahead. Zero two five. I wanted to be able to tell Adam that we moved like really far without him. Cause <laughs> I <wanted. laughs> What's the limit, Samantha? Is it five zero? 
Uh, no, no, no limits. It's just uh, oh, I typically okay. do shorter moves when we're headed upslope because oh. sometimes it takes a bit for Atalanta to catch up to the ship. Ah, oh, okay. Or, you know, if we stop to look at something, um, it usually means the ship is already kind of slowing down versus yeah. a longer move where we have to stop the ship suddenly and that just takes a little longer for things to settle out. Ah, oh, okay. okay. That is so. smart. Yeah. Based on our... But we're also going history. 0 0.3 knots, so we're not... We're not going very fast. Just passed another black coral. Chat is tuning in. We just had another M-Class X-ray solar flare at 16.30 Z time, do those affect your electronics on board? What? What? What happened? M-class X-ray solar flare? I'm gonna look that up. I do not know what that is. <coughs> Isn't our s the sun the M-class star? Mm, yeah, the Earth's polar regions. Huh. Oh yeah, uh, medium size, they generally cause brief radio blackouts that affect oh. Earth's polar regions. No, not chat, we're good. And then... Yeah, the ROVs would be protected from all that, but all the sea Oh, really? Would. Oh, wow. But, the, but they're also connected to the surface, so... I mean, everything in here... <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, we're in the metal box. Maybe we're in the metal box, yeah. <laughs> no. Makes for great auroras, though. Oh. Um, the sea pen that we passed was just Penatula. I noted. I aspire to Yellow. see, though. <coughs> it's a sun flare. Did anybody see the news that there's some whistleblower that claims the U.S. has alien spacecraft? And he's like, he's a, like a legit guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did hear about that. Okay, Wait, I think what? I've heard, I heard a little bit. I mean, it made like CNN and all the big networks. Oh, wow. I feel like every <laughs> few years I hear something, something like Something like this. that? I know, that was one of the... The questions from Chad is, have we ever found an alien shipwreck? <laughs> <laughs> America's long, strange history of USO whistleblowers. Yep. UFO whistleblowers. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why are they hiding? The aliens or the whistleblowers? <laughs> um, both. Aliens are down here. We <laughs> 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 need a push core or anything? Is there anything we can do? <laughs> um, <laughs> blank eDNA. We can do blank eDNA and Kay. we already have a push core. Uh, we can get another one if we wanted to. We've got 15 meters left on this move. And if we see anything we like, or if we see nothing, and we want to get a blink. No skin. Could yeah. be a nice time. What do you think, Jules? Uh, let's do. Let's do eDNA. Um, sorry, did you say push core also? I don't think we need another push core. We're good. Okay. Yeah. So let's do. Eb is gonna be really upset. <laughs> if there's no push cores. <laughs> or rocks. Oh, rocks. Hold on, hold on. We still got ten meters after this move. Oh, but you're far ahead. Okay. How many rocks do we have? Not enough. In half the watch. You ready for sample, Salvo? Uh, we're just doing a Niskin. Yep. I don't need I don't need the salvos. I need. Uh, we need to switch the camera over to 
the Niskin bottles. Roger. Oh, this is the first time in this watch I've used the arm. So far. And? Five, five out of ten? Seven out of ten? What? The experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell because it's in a different position. Ah, uh, right. The Dan position. Uh, yeah. Does Dan use it like an arm? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> you know how it, some people hold it kind of like it's like tucked into their arm so like flush with their arm where you like hold it from the front yeah he has it cocked up and looking at it he does it josh also does it yeah so niskin bottles five and six are occupied other than that you're good sample 189 sample 189 yes 189 So five and six, so we could do four. We're using four, yes. We're using four? This is the one to do? Yep, that's the one. Or one, two, three, whatever. Are we looking? Yep. We're looking. Done. Sampled. Achieve. Woo. Anything else we can do? <laughs> <laughs> can you make Hercules do a little dance? <laughs> uh, <laughs> negative. It would be a cloud dance. That's Adel Adelana's signature move. <laughs> <laughs> no stealing my moves. Uh, carry on. <laughs> carry on. Should we change course? Should we zig? I mean, you want to still head up this, to the top of the slope, yeah? Yeah. We could zigzag a bit, but I don't think it's going to change the, <laughs> the <laughs> outcome. <laughs> there have been corals. <clears throat> there have been. Not completely dead. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Bridge, Nev. Three zero meters, zero two five. You have a viewer asking, does anyone use the app iNaturalist? What's iNaturalist? Does anyone know? Yeah, it's an app you can use to um, identify different, is it plant species? Plant, animals, everything. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And then second part of their question, has anyone ever been moved or gotten emotional about something they saw while on an expedition? Can zoom in, Dave? Um, I'll finish answering the first question about iNaturalist. Uh, okay. We, we don't uh, use it uh, frequently on the ship, mm -hmm. but some people do kind of do it in their free time. Um, but it's not it's not part of our policy, but we definitely have people who, are, who um, kind of contribute to iNaturalist uh, on their own. Um, and we have a lot of folks in the Nautilus Live viewer community who also are really active on no, iNaturalist. No, so it's a really great way. Um, there's an app you can. Um, it, they also have an app called Seek that you can use. Like if you're on a hike and you see a plant or an animal you don't know, you can take a um, photo of it, or you can. Uh, they have kind of like a live camera option that will identify species, or at least get down to like family or or <laughs> genus, which is awesome. So I would definitely cool. recommend using it if you're interested in getting into um, kind of learning more about plant and animal species when you're out in the world. Oh. Oh, no. Okay, I naturalist. Yeah, <laughs> very cool community of um, citizen scientists oh, and and scientists, you know, research scientists who uh, 
contribute to the app. Um, to answer the other question, um, this has certainly been um, very exciting. Um, this is a really unique opportunity, and I've just been honored to be here. So, in a way, that is emotional, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, it. it is, it is a really great feeling. Um, just being here and knowing that like we're some of the first people to see this part of the sea floor it's um you know if you think about it it's pretty profound thank you yeah i agree and then um i'm on the same boat and i think i've been i know Eddie, we're all in the same boat yeah literally <laughs> literally <laughs> And then I have been moved and almost like awestruck. I think um, the tipping for point for when I got emotional was seeing the Dumbo octopus. <laughs> yeah, I felt like, you know, some oncoming tears. So I was very happy. Yeah. Um, so I finally got to saw the Dumbo octopus. Um, but yeah, it's been, a, it's been a journey. It's been an experience. I'm super grateful um, to be here um, with amazing people. We're such a great team, so... And for everybody online, y'all have been amazing with your questions. Um, continue to uh, send them in and I'll relay them to the team. Thanks for being here as we explore the uh, Central Pacific Ocean together. If anyone else wants to talk about their feelings. Oh. <laughs> I, I also Crap. got pretty emotional when I saw my first squid. Oh. No, like, Nine years ago, <laughs> <laughs> I was on the Western Flyer, the uh, Imbari ship, and uh, yeah, I, I have all of these photos from like an old phone of just like the blurriest squid. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, and I was the the cruise I was on was a four day uh, environmental impact assessment of the Mars network, which is a, a, another kind of submarine. Um, or a seafloor cable in the Monterey Submarine Canyon. And it was the end of the season. Everyone just wanted to go home. And <laughs> I was there in the, in the control van with the pilots just so excited. And at the end of the cruise, they were like, you know, it was a good reminder that what we do is impactful and interesting. Those are they look like two worms. worms. I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at. Uh, it looks like a... Shredoplura sponge with some tube worms. No one involved seems to be in great health. No, or <laughs> just covered in sediment. No, true. I mean, the tube worms are feeding, so. Yeah, they appear to be happy. Doing okay, yeah. This is for sure not a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> happening it might be i don't know it could be like a commensalist relationship i'm not sure if the two worms are hurting the sponge i'd say it's definitively not a meat cute exactly not a meat not cute, a meat cute, cute for sure. definitely it's a one-sided yeah. relationship at the very least good to continue good to continue chat the it is i naturalist I naturalist. That's what that's called. And uh, let's do three zero meters zero two five. There is also an app for uh, looking at constellations, which is pretty cool. Broke that out the other night. What app do you guys use? Uh, star. Hold on. 
Oh. Star. <laughs> I wrote it down. My, I use Skyview. Oh, sky yeah. Skyview? Yeah. yeah. There's that a couple one. of them. Skyview Light. I think it's the free one. Ooh. Cool sponge.